why don't you just, you know, kind of state who you are, what you do, and why, okay. why you think we asked you to come here. <laughs> Um, so I'm Patrick Woods. I was a team leader for about 10 years. So I, during the Great Recession, I shut a market center down. I turned one around and then 2011 took Roseville to the number one market center in all of Keller Williams two years in a row. So that's kind of my peaked in 2011, 2012 Patrick Woods story. <laughs> Prior to that, I owned a dot com and watch the dot-com bubble burst and the economy with that. So I've, I've been around these things a few times. Um, I'm also a MAPS coach. I'm an operating principal of a market center in the Sacramento, California area. And I run a real estate team out here as well. And then I travel and speak on career visioning, 306090, success through others, and a few other courses. So, and I'm a husband and a dad and all that fun stuff too. Can't leave that out. So I really don't have a whole And you're my coach. I'm too. Yeah. So yeah, that's my story. Um, and this is all leadership, correct? Yeah. Yes. This is all, this is all leadership. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think the biggest thing, I mean, uh, I would guess the reason why you had me on here is because I'm your coach and, uh, here's what's been interesting is just having these conversations. So if we just back up a little bit, Elk Grove Unified School District, where my market center is, was the first school district, at least as far as I'm aware of that, closed down because of coronavirus and that happened on march 7th and the the state and other people are saying that's a way overreaction that's crazy and then literally that wednesday nba shut down right and so it's been that. interesting to coach people all around the country and watch them go from oh my gosh the sky is falling to this is ridiculous and slowly the people that thought the sky is falling are starting to get a little bit more real and more importantly, the people that thought this is ridiculous, we're all kind of getting into the same boat together over the course of these weeks. And as a month has gone on, I, heard, I saw something saying today it was like the 87th day of March. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like the longest month ever. It was like, yeah. Totally. So everybody's kind of in the same boat. And it's been really, it's been super helpful to, for me to have these conversations with team leaders in and OPs in Seattle and in New York and in Florida and in Oklahoma and in California. And kind of take the best practices and almost create this whole mastermind group with my my coaching clients and even for my market center to be able to make decisions quickly and if there's one takeaway i've gotten out of this whole event is make decisions really stinking fast because the faster you can make a decision the sooner you can get on to the next decision and i saw this play out <clears throat> so for those of you that are team leaders and ops and whatnot of a market center have you ever had a holiday that your market center did that another market center did not do locally Right. Like, so, you mean so somebody like, had, um, like, Black Friday off and yeah, the like neighboring market center, off, market center didn't? Yeah, market center doesn't. And then that other market yeah, center five. starts calling you going, well, why did you give your people that day off, right? So we shut down our market center and had everybody work remote on Monday, and I started getting all those calls. And then <laughs> other OP saying, you, really, you sent your old staff home? Why'd you do that? And then by Wednesday, the state put us on a shelter in place. Yeah. Right? And so the thing, the reason why I made that decision, so there's a point to the story. The reason why I made that decision was because I couldn't sit in that purgatory of should I or shouldn't I anymore. Right. And when I made that decision, it got us onto the next phase of the game. Mm -hmm. Right. It got us into a place where we now went from should we or shouldn't we to how do we support our agents remotely? And then we've got to that place where we got that figured out that got us into, okay, now how do we go after and support our local realtor community? which then got us into growth. So the faster you can make decisions so you can get to the next decision, that was my biggest aha in this whole process. When you're dealing with an uncertain world, make a decision. It may not be the best decision or the right decision. However, we always have the power to make it right. Does that make sense? So to that point is where are you now? Um, are you at the point where you're giving back to the community and we're on to the next, like where is your market center at right now? So um, we brought on a capper last week. We're bringing on a capper this week. So and so here's the thing that uh, you, you go, you get stuck in triage, right? How do we, <laughs> I feel weird. I don't have my wedding ring on because I've used so much Purell. It, it was one of those rubber ones and it disintegrated. <laughs> it did? <laughs> it did. So, um, so I feel a little weird using my hands. With, so uh, right now I'm in my house. Um, <laughs> no, right now, so you shift from triage to growth, right? And a lot of people are getting stuck in triage. And so 
the kind of the example that I'm using is again, make those decisions. So on my coaching calls, a lot of people say, I feel like I should do a zoom or I've done a zoom to my community. And so there's people that have done these and they've done a handful of them and they're already on to the next phase. And there's people that are still sitting here going, I think I should, what should I talk about? I don't care if you just say, okay, where on my calendar tomorrow? Can I do a zoom? And you say, okay, noon, I can do one. Let's come up with a title, uh, shift your mindset, shift your business. Things to focus on during uncertain times. I don't care. Think of something. Put it on your calendar. And I guarantee between now and noon tomorrow, if you blast this out to your database, you will figure out what to talk about because you've boxed, your, boxed yourself in to figure out the solution to that problem. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's no different than when I would go on a listing presentation and I would tell them as part of my marketing plan, I will door knock 150 doors the first week that we put your house on the market. Now, they loved it. And the reality was I wasn't, it was the odds of me selling their house by door knocking was slim to none. What it did was it boxed me in to do my lead generation. Right. So what we need to do is continually box ourselves in. So think about like my coaching calls. I can't wake up in the morning and say, I, I don't really feel like having that call with Mary Beth. No, she's paying good money to have those and our markets are just paying good money to have those calls. I've got to show up whether I want to or not. I am boxed in. And what's interesting is as I have my first call and then my second call, my energy gets better and better and better. Are you following me on that? Yeah. Right. So the more we reach out to our pond and have those conversations. So where we are now, this, I'm kind of doing a long winded answer to that. <clears throat> it went from let's do a zoom to our pond and let's add value to them. Everything's about how do we add such crazy value that they can't imagine being anyplace else. Because I guarantee you in most market times, if we asked our agents on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel supported, loved, cared for, led, all that during this time? I bet on a scale of one to 10, they're going to say a 465. And I can guarantee you that there are people at other brokerages that are not feeling that same level of support. Yeah. Right. And so there's two pieces in this. Um, one for our, there's two things for this cut expenses, drive revenue. So for our agents, cut their expenses, contact their database. Right. And so for us, us saying, okay, have you felt loved and supported right now? Awesome. What we're modeling for you is what you should be doing for your database. Mm -hmm. And then typically what happens is they say over the last 37 years, I know Keller Williams has told me I should contact my database and I, I just haven't done it. It feels weird. Okay. Has anything that we've done to support you felt weird? No. Okay. And then you find the little wins. Like I called somebody in my database. We had a great conversation. We didn't talk about real estate and now I feel safe to have that conversation in the future. Mm -hmm. right, so we, we set that up. Then the next step is uh, <clears throat> what are we doing to, for us, we have getting our agents into productivity, cut expenses, drive revenue, agents and productivity and recruiting producing agents. So again, those, that pond does not feel the love and support more than likely that our agents are feeling. So how do we add value to them? So doing the zooms is great. The challenge that you have with zooms, unless you're having them register and like I recognize couple of people on this. So that's the only way I'm going to know who was on and who wasn't unless I have them register. So we did the first one. We had 88 people who were not Keller Williams on there. And I recognize a few names on there and I didn't recognize a lot of people and I had no way to know who was on there and who wasn't. So next one, we started registering. Right. And so now we're getting all their contact information. <laughs> Is everybody taking notes? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> So now I've got all their contact information for all the people that are on there. And I'm going to do little things in there. Like I'm going to say, Hey, is this adding value? You know, give me a thumbs up in the, in the webinar or give me a thumbs up on in the chat box. Tell me, yes, if this is adding value, do you want us to keep doing this? Great. So I'm kind of hyping it up and getting their buy-in on. Yeah. If we do this again and you got value out of it, will you invite one of your friends from your brokerage? This is a brokerage ag agnostic zoom to support our realtors community. Then I might throw out there something along the lines of the um, bank statement exercise or goal setting to the now or something Keller like. Like I'm gonna throw out a value add piece. Sorry, and I couldn't hear what you said. Apparently Siri's listening in. <laughs> we'll shut Siri off. Okay. So like Patrick shutting his th th uh, Siri off. Let me ask, is this adding value? If so, give us a thumbs up. So Mary Beth and I know you want us to continue to deliver content like this. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. So I'm like, yes. Like these are the types of things that we want. And so you think about it. Okay. Now I've got everybody registered and I put out a little item of value. So we call like, uh, on the one thing website, there's the kick-ass guide to goal setting. So you can talk about the importance of following your calendar right now, especially while you're working at home. 
And if you want, I'd be happy to send everybody a copy of the Kick-Ass Guide to Goal Setting, which starts with your someday goals and works all the way down to your calendar today. If you'd like that, give us a thumbs up, give us something in the chat. So I'm working on the, uh, that engagement in the Zoom. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> I, would, I would throw something out to say, I'll send this out to everybody so you have it. And in that, I'm gonna put either a link to my calendar or I'm gonna put my cell phone number in the email that I send out to everybody. But just to say, we've been talking about a lot of cool things with our agents here on how, just how to survive and weather the storm, but actually how to reinvent themselves during this time. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put my, my info in this email that I'm gonna send the kick-ass guide to goal setting to you. And what I would like is if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one or small group conversation specifically about your business, you text me and we get something on the calendar. So I'm adding value and I have a call to action. Call to action. So these are kind of the things that as you're making decisions quickly and you do your first Zoom and you realize, wow, I don't have anybody. It's kind of like an agent with an open house, right? They hold their first open house and then they don't have anybody through and then they meet with their team leader and the team leader says, well, you picked a home that's been on the market for six months and has 37 turns to get there and you only put out four signs, right? And they start working to get better at open houses. This is the same thing. The faster we move, the faster we're going to get better because I guarantee you, and you're probably already starting to see it, our competitors are starting to catch up, mm -hmm. right? They're starting to reach out to the pond as well and do webinars and all this kind of stuff as well. And so the last thing that I look at everything, I, if I overreact and send my staff home and work remotely before the state said I had to, and everybody goes, wow, Patrick totally overreacted. I'd rather err on that side than not in which we had. Same thing is true with this. I don't want to look back and go, woulda, coulda, shoulda. I don't want to see on Facebook, somebody switched brokerages and they did not join my company. Right? Because there's too much value right now, in my opinion, in Keller Williams and with the leaders and the way everybody's showing up right now that we shouldn't be attracting, not even recruiting, attracting people like crazy. And I've, as a coach, I've heard it for years. Like, oh my gosh, I just want to coach and consult my agents. I don't want to worry about doing all these 40 appointments. Mm -hmm. I just want to have value conversations. We're there. Right. So <laughs> at some point uh, we have to pick, you know, pick our side of the fence we're going to fall on. Right now is the opportunity to really add value and recruit people through value. Right. And so just get after it. It's kind of my thing. Don't, don't miss the window. It'd be like right now, same thing with our agents. How many of our agents in their database do you think their database knows more than one realtor? And it's the person who's talking to those people that's going to get the business because everything that's happened right now, it's the garden hose. We put a little kink in the garden hose and the water is slowed down. Some, place, some places like New York slowed down more than others, right? But that pressure is building up on the other side of the garden hose. You open up that, something's going to happen, whether it's a vaccine, uh, the, the virus starts doing this, and that garden hose is going to get unkinked and then the floodgates are going to open. And so we need to be in first position. Our agents need to be there and we as leaders need to be there. And the way that we do that is by staying in constant conversation and it doesn't have to be like, hey, let's talk about all the value we can give you by, by joining Keller Williams. Let's just talk to them about their business, how we can help them, right? Have some subtle closes in there, but have a really honest and authentic conversation with them. Uh, what would you say to some of our leaders that maybe are not Zoom friendly or maybe like video might not be something that they want to dive into? What are some other things, other items of values? How are you seeing some things set up to where maybe agents can plug in and they don't have to go on video? Well, <laughs> I, have, I have two sides to that. One, get, get used to video. <laughs> right? I love you and get used to video. The time I'm, is now. I'm good. I'm, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm saying, I'm saying, that's what I'm saying to everybody else out there. Again, how many of our agents said, yeah, I know I should have been doing do video for a long time to my database, and they didn't because they were self-conscious about it. And now here they are hopping on Zoom happy hours, Zooming with their family, FaceTime with old friends. They're videoing like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and when we come out of this, they're going to feel much, there's going to be a select few, watch this. There's going to be a select few that come out and go, wow, I need to do more video to my database. And there's going to be others that regress back to the way it was before. True. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to be self-conscious about doing video again. So one, get really comfortable doing video. It's only going to make you better. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw the Simon Sinek uh, video of his Zoom. Yeah, you shared, yeah, you shared it. Okay, so uh, he, in this video, he talks about um, what we're experiencing right now. Well, it's unprecedented from we've never experienced a pandemic in our lifetime like this, all this kind of stuff. The disruption to business is not unheard of or unprecedented. When the internet came out, there are companies that 
adapted and adopted the internet and changed their strategy. And there's companies that doubled down on the way they were doing things. And those companies that doubled down borders, right? They're not around anymore. And there's companies like Amazon that adopted and adapted to the internet age. They're saying that he was saying that um, Uber isn't putting the taxi driver out of business. It's the taxi driver's unwillingness to adapt to the future that's putting them out of business. Right. And so the question that those people will ask is what do we need to do right now to stay in business where the real question is how do we need to reinvent ourselves to come out on the other side of this in a wholly better position. Right. And what we're seeing a lot in a lot of places, we're starting to see a little light at the end of the tunnel and we know it's not a freight train heading our way. We just don't know how long the tunnel is. So long winded answer to get comfortable with video because right now I, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty stretched on time. Anybody else or am I the only one? No, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so and, we're not even commuting. Back. And I, I, you know, I commute for like an hour and a half every day. So that's like three hours of my day is in a car. And I, I'm feeling extremely stretched that I, I'm loading up with tons of content in these weeks. Yeah. And so the thing, I, the thing I'm looking at is we need to be efficient with our time. We need to hit, we need to cast a, we need to do a shotgun approach so that we can weed it into a, into our fishing net right and start getting one-on-one -on -one with the people in the masses so that's where video is really big um and then if you're not doing video the other thing is the same thing that we're telling our agents to do what would it look like to just call your database and reach out to those agents at other brokerages and just say how are you do you need anything we're here to help it's the same thing we're teaching our agents to do to their database the other thing that i look at is how can we activate our agents and our alc to be a part of this team. Yeah, let's talk about that because you shared a little bit of that in, a, in an email. Yep, so everything, like in the email I sent, I put that gif of uh, Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park, yep. where he's in the back of the Jeep and you see the T-Rex coming at him, he, he's saying, must go faster. Like that's how I feel right now. Um, <clears throat> and so you look at it, and so some of our market centers have discounted or waived rents or waived fees. And I would be having strings attached to that. And I mean that in the best possible way. I'd be saying, hey guys, here's what we're doing because we have not been able to have access to our markets and we feel it's the right thing to do. And it's our way of showing you that we are in the boat with you. Now with this, I have a favor to ask. Can I ask you to hop in the boat with us? Hmm. Who do you know that's at another brokerage that maybe isn't getting the support like you're getting that you could reach out to and invite to our team meeting? over Zoom, that you can reach out to and invite to our Zoom on shift, that you can reach out to and say, hey, let's get you on a phone. We could do a three-way Zoom with you, me, and Julie, and we could have a specific conversation about your business, All right? So I think that, I think it's fair to do a trade like that because you look at, so for our market center, our market center, if we waive all the rent, that's about 6,500 bucks in lost revenue. So it's not the end of the world. And there's a mathematical equation on how, on average company dollar per transaction, how many more transactions do I need to do to replace that lost revenue, right? So I can, I can tell everybody that had an office, hey, when you're doing your lead gen, reach out to one or two other KW agents and invite them to do it with you, right? The other thing I could do is I can look at that 6,500 bucks and say, that's about a quarter cap. So if we add an additional quarter cap to the market center, that replaces that lost revenue. So there's a lot of ways that we can slice and dice this to make it a win-win. And I don't, when we're making such big and massive deposits into our agents, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for their help. Mm -hmm. right? And if you don't ASK, you don't GET. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, try it when you go check into a hotel. <laughs> you ask for a complimentary upgrade, odds are you'll probably get one if you're super oh. nice to the guy or gal behind the counter. So, and then ALC, Grab your career development committee, grab your growth committee, engage them at a really high level, right? So I had a, I had, as an OP, I had a Zoom call with our ALC yesterday. I walked them through my thought process on if I waive rent, that means that I lose $6,000 in revenue. So does that mean I might need to move one of my, our employees to part-time to cover the waived rent? And are you, is like every decision has a ripple effect, right? And so I walked them through all the things that we're doing. So when they're not seeing me do a Facebook Live, into our group, they're seeing, they're, they know I'm working on rent abatements and deferments. They know I'm working on SBA loans and the PPP program and you know all this stuff behind the scenes that is gonna impact and give us the ability to do more to support them. So go ahead, Julie. 
I was going to say, would you share, you sent out a great email to your coaching clients um, about, and it could have been your last ALC meeting or your growth committee meeting growth and committee. that they came up with. I, it was, it was really great. And I'm sure um, the other uh, people on this call could take advantage, you know, could get something from that. Yeah, it was really, it was really simple. And I'll, again, it goes back to the ask. I just said, I called my team leader and my team leader is still kind of new and he's awesome. And so there's little things where I have to jump in as the OP at being a team leader for 10 years. I still have to throw on my team leader hat every once in a while. So I called a growth committee meeting and said, it's time we hand some of this training and education off to the growth committee because it's a monumental opportunity for us to attract the right type of people. And what we want to be doing is not addition. We want to be doing multiplication, right? And so when we activate a group of people to go after a group of people, now we're multiplying. And so we reached out to the growth committee. We did a call. And so we laid out, here's what we've been doing. Yeah. So we did a zoom with the growth committee. There it is. And so we just, we had a conversation about, okay, what would it look like if you guys put together a zoom call and you activated the market center to invite people and so we had that call on Friday, the ALC got together on Saturday and put together a schedule and mapped out here, we're going to do shift and we're going to do this. And so they met like, I don't know about you, but it's, it's the first time I've ever heard of my ALC getting together on a Saturday to map out how to grow a market center. Yeah. Like they're feeling so loved and supported. They're totally all in when I ask for help back. And so don't be afraid to ask. It's, this is a large burden for any one person to carry, and it's not too big for a whole group to carry together. Yeah. Right. And, and regardless, of, and we could talk about, there's all these nuances from New York to California to Washington to Florida to Arizona just did shelter in place effective. It starts today. Right. And so everybody's in these different boats. And the reality is we got to keep our heads screwed on straight and we got to get through this thing together because we all like, you look at the unemployment that happened. My brain noodles on all this stuff all the time, if you can't tell. The unemployment that happened over the last 60 years, it goes like this. And then the highest was like 1982, 660,000 people got uh, filed for unemployment in a week. Then you go like this, and all of a sudden last week, 3.3 million people filed for unemployment. Yeah. So, and what's happening in our area is that deals are falling out because those people got laid off and the vendor's doing employment verification right before funding. But the reality is, is those people got laid off because people came out and said, bars are closed, restaurants are closed, gyms are closed, movie theaters are closed, malls are closed, on and on and on. And so those people lost their jobs instantaneously because of a virus, not because of a gradual decline in the economy. So odds are once a virus passes, all those people are going to be pulled or a large percentage are going to be pulled back into the workforce and then they're going to be ready to buy. So what we've done in a lot of this, we just kicked the can down the road a little bit. Whether it's one month, two months, six months, we don't know. However, that floodgate will open again, and it's our job to be in that first position. And the more we can multiply and activate our team, I mean, this is, this is where Keller Williams shines. I saw another company that said, we were built for this, and sorry, you're, you're late to the party, pal. We started in a recession. We conquered the Great Recession. We wrote a freaking book on it, right? And in the last 10 years, we responded to more natural disasters than anybody else. We created a playbook on it. We have 18 wheelers stashed all across the country to support people. Yeah. We've got the same dial. And by the way, in the last three or four years, Gary Keller rolled out a technology arm to our company, made us a tech company, which made us all uniquely prepared to weather this storm more than any other real estate brokerage out there. Right. They're all talking all this stuff and they were not through an economic or a real estate correction or a natural disaster like this or any. Right. And so, in our area, they're not paying their agents. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, this is the thing that this is what we need to get out there. These are, this is our, we always talk about, gosh, I wish we could be more coaching, consulting in our appointments to attract people as opposed to recruiting. I wish we could tell our story better. We need to tell our story better. It, it's go time. So I don't know if you, you can hear the excitement and enthusiasm in my voice. Like this stuff fires me up. Yeah. So, so can yeah, I, I hope you? I'm not the only one. <laughs> We're, we're fired up. I, I mean, most of the people that are on here and Matt is here, who's been co-hosting Shift with me daily, mm -hmm. having that week, having that daily uh, in my schedule, it, it just sets the whole day. It, it's like having the lead generation time block. So <clears throat> that's been great. 
Awesome. So I would, awesome. I would encourage everybody, if you're not already doing something set in this calendar every single day for your agents, it's been really super helpful for myself. As a leader, um, I have to ask you, what do you see going on with the Market Center as far as cutting expenses? Mm -hmm. And um, even break, you said maybe taking away some staff or going part time on some staff. What are you seeing throughout the country with those changes? Like, what should we be prepared to do? <laughs> That's, that's a million dollar question right there. It, I think, cause there's so many variables. I, I talk to market centers where um, they're, they're making cuts with their staff pretty aggressively. And some of it's because they, they frankly just don't have a whole lot of cash. They, you know, they I have one that they just bought a market center and they don't really even have a month and a half worth of reserves. And so some of those salaries are going to eat into that pretty fast. <clears throat> and then my goal. So I asked myself this question. I say, okay, at what point do I start doing layoffs or reduction of hours? Now we've got some things that are coming into play on uh, Thursday with some of the things that they announced previously. It takes a, a 14 days or 15 days for it to kick in. So April 2nd, some of those unemployment laws and stuff will kick in. So talk to your HR about what, how that impacts you if it does or doesn't. So I think we're going to see some layoffs coming up this week before that April 2nd date. So, the, so I look at it and so, okay, how much can I save by reducing hours or doing a layoff? And then the other question that I've been asking, I, I'm not quite there yet, is what would need to happen that I didn't have to do pay cuts or lay off anybody? And so it's just an interesting question to ask you. Like, is there another, like, what could I do that I could come back and say, I'm going to promise you all have a job for at least the next four months because we're going to do this, 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 and this. So it's just, I'm not saying that I'm there yet or that yeah. it's possible. I'm just saying it's an interesting question to ask because when you start asking a question like that, you start looking for other ways to cut your expenses right. or other ways to create win-win. So that's where we went to the ALC with the office space. And my ALC said, I don't know that we should waive office rent. I think we're all in this together. I'm like, that's really cool, right? So trust your people. So as far as um, making cuts, I'm seeing everything all across the board from people that are making no cuts to people that are like literally going down to a skeleton crew. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's, there's pros and cons on both sides of that. And so for me, I'm going line item, just like they teach you line item by line. Item. This morning I cut out another, gosh, I cut out uh, 200 plus 150, $200 plus 150. So $350 a month, just in 15 minute exercise this morning. And where you, your profit is made in those pennies. The other thing I'm looking at is we just went through our phone system. We're paying like $1,800 a month for our phone system. We now have it down to, and that was a drop from previous, from an old contract we had. I dropped that down to $400 a month now. Mm -hmm. I got my rent deferred. Now yeah. I'm not going to renegotiate early negotiations next week with my landlord to try and get that deferment of rent waived in a few months free if we extend our lease early. And lock in because there's, I know there's a building that's being built that's we're at two dollars and forty cents a square foot, and the new building that's being built is going to be at three dollars and thirty five cents a square foot. And so if I can lock in now, so there's all these things I'm looking at on ways to reduce my expenses. Um, wait, 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 did you say your office space is at two dollars a square foot? Yeah. <laughs> like. You guys hate me right now. <laughs> like two dollars a square foot. It like the way we would say ours is like. Twenty dollars a square foot. Well, that's per month. Oh, okay. Got you. Poof. Yeah. Got you. <laughs> yes, we're at the we're at a two point one multiplier. Okay. Yeah. So we've got. I mean, our rent's twenty seven thousand. Now we've got it uh, cut by fifty percent for the next two months. So it's at thirteen thousand. So I mean, all these things I'm looking at. We're we're applying for the SBA grant and loan. We're doing the payroll protection program. We're doing all this stuff because I want to be in a position where they say, "Here you go. Here's your loan," and I go, "Uh." We're good. We don't need it. I'd rather be in that spot than going, oh my gosh, we need to do something because we didn't make decisions fast enough. And now I'm scrambling. So that loan that you're talking about is a federal loan and our MCAs should be working with our OPs to be applying. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And that's, and so some of that is um, it's, so the PPP we did through our local bank. So our banker, cause what, so it's a payroll protection program. And that is, that is a, it's a loan that's forgivable. And so essentially what it is, you take your last 12 months of rent, uh, utilities and um, salaries, divided by 12, like you take the total, divide by 12, so you get your average. 
and you times it by two and a half, and that's essentially what your loan will be. And as long as you spend it in the next eight weeks, I think it is, don't quote me on this, this is kind of like, it's all new, so we're all figuring out as we go. You spend it on those three things over the next eight weeks. So say you get 150 and you spend 100 grand of that on those three things in the next eight weeks, that 100 grand is forgivable and you just owe that $50,000 $50, back to the bank. Right? Okay. And you can just cut them a check back because you didn't spend it if you want to, or you probably have it at a great interest rate because of what's going on. So the government will cover that 100 and you have to cover that 50. So there's all kinds of stuff out there that you could be doing to uh, put yourself in a better position because it, and the hard part is, and I'm gonna have to hop off in just a minute. Um, so we've got, uh, <clears throat> and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's right. I think the one thing that we just wanted to end with is what do you want to see personally come from all of this? What would you like to see when we get to the other side of this? I want to, I want to be on the other side of this, having a big freaking party <laughs> <laughs> where we're all hanging out together and, barbecuing and all that stuff because i think everybody's been inside for a long time so on the hey, other side get of this, seven hugs seven hugs exactly so uh where i want to what i want to see on the other side of this kind of my mentality and i know i'm talking to a bunch of people in new york so you i know julie will like this the rest of you may not tom brady when he was in the super bowl down 24 to 3 28 to 3 he he was in there going there's no freaking way i'm gonna lose this game and that's the mentality that we need to have right now is we, we're, our backs are up against the wall with the economy and being on lockdown. And there's no freaking way I'm going to lose this game. And we're going to come out on the other side stronger and better for it, I promise you. And so I think the biggest thing is keeping your head screwed on straight, knowing that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We don't know when it will be. We just know it will happen. And working our tail off right now to add so much value because, it, again, it gets me all fired up because we have such an opportunity to make an impact and a difference in people's lives. People got into this industry for a very specific purpose, and that was to improve and change their world. And right now we can deliver on the goods like nobody else. That's so awesome. That's, that's what I want to see on the other side of this. With last, the Great Recession, we went from number four in market share to number one. Mm -hmm. Like I want us to go from number one to like, they can't even, we can't even see the competition in our rear view mirror. Untouchable, right? Untouchable. Yeah. Patrick, thank you. I know you got to go. I don't want to keep you any longer. I truly appreciate you. I know yeah. Mary Beth does um, as being our coach. And, and honestly, I don't think anyone has reached out. Well, I know for sure no one's reached out as much as you've been in contact with us. So thank you for all that you do for us every day. Absolutely. My pleasure. And if anybody on this call wants my information, feel free to share it with them. I'm here to help with whatever. Like I'm all in on this. And yeah. so Hopefully you're all in on this with your people too. So yeah. rock and roll. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.